All right, so next up is once you guys start tracking your macros, once you guys start using on your phone the, the keto, uh, that, that keto uh, app, that blue app, what's going to happen is um, when you start tracking your macros is you're going to look at it and you're going to go like, dude, I don't understand. Like I had, I had lunch, I had dinner, I ate all my meals, and I, I just can't get in all the fat. Like what the heck do I do? Um, I thought I was eating keto and then I started looking at my macros and I'm like, I'm a way, way off from that 75% fat, 20% protein and 5% carbs, right? And that's natural, I think. It was natural for me. Um, it's, it's very uh, non-intuitive to eat keto, okay? It takes a little bit of adjustment. So there's kind of some core things that you guys can use to get your fat in. And again, um, I'm going to kind of name out a bunch of stuff um, that you guys can use and that are tools. I don't want you guys to uh, to judge yourself on any of these to start. Know that though, like long term, I started cutting some of these out, okay, and going with what I thought were kind of the healthier long term benefits as keto for me is like a very long term play, okay? So some ways to get your guys' fat in. Um, First and foremost, guys, is avocados. I love avocados. Um, I'm on a kick um, almost every week or every other week where I'm eating like an, an avocado every day, okay? That is a great, very, very healthy way for you guys to get your fat in. Um, a good quality olive oil is going to help you guys get your fat in. Um, an, another alternative to, to olive oil is avocado oil. Uh, in fact, when you compare the two, I will take avocado oil any day of the week versus an olive oil. Um, but I like to mix them. I like to throw in both. They have different tastes. Um, coconut oil is, uh, is is one that you guys can, can use as well. Um, I don't know about you guys. When I first started using coconut oil, to be frank, like I just wasn't a fan. <laughs> uh, but the more I started using it, uh, the more that like I started to get used to the taste, and now I don't mind the taste at all. It was always kind of just weird or strange or odd. Uh, but now coconut oil, like I could just like take a, a tablespoon or two of coconut oil and I could put it in my mouth and eat it, like no joke. Um, uh, a high quality butter. So like uh, I eat um, carry gold butter, for example, uh, is, a, is a gold, I get the gold package with the salt because again, I need the sodium. Uh, and so does everybody on keto. Um, heavy whipping cream. Is a, is a way to uh, to get in a lot of fat. Uh, and if you're looking for like a dessert, right? Take some uh, some vanilla um, some vanilla and drop it in, right? With some stevia into some heavy whipping cream and whip that, and it'll quite literally become whipped cream. Like, I mean, I'm on a diet eating whipped cream. What can go wrong here? Um, MCT oil is uh, part of coconut oil, but just a part of it um, and it's like the most beneficial or useful um, for keto because um, it turns right into energy the fastest it converts the fastest into energy um, but I've been doing a lot of research on MCT and um, yeah it converts the fastest into energy but kind of long-term benefits versus just coconut oil I, I, I'm not real sold so it's a cool supplement it's something that I like to play with, but for me, MCT oil is kind of like the keto meal. I try to not get too much of an addiction to it or rely on it too heavily. Um, and then, guys, next up is just like the, the big thing I can tell you about how to get your fat in to make those macros work and to actually be doing keto and not just like Adkins, which is just high protein, moderate fat or low fat and no carbs. Like that's Adkins. Okay, I find myself on Adkins, I'm not satiated and I feel like shit, which means I'm not full, I have no energy and I just don't feel well. So the fat for me is the key with keto, which means we gotta know how to get our fat in. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is whenever you're eating, whatever your main dish is, is to ensure that you're just, you're going for a fatty cut of whatever that meat or the protein is. So let's say that you're having a hamburger and um, or a cheeseburger and you're going to skip the bun, right? Because you're not going to have the bun because you're keto, okay? Um, simply, instead of going for 90-10, right, use 80-20 or use 75-25, okay? And that will do the most um, uh, for you in terms of getting your fats in, right? That is the easiest hack that you guys can use, all right? And uh, for those of you guys that are on a budget as well, 
let me tell you something. Those are the meats that are cheap. 75, 25, like you can get that thing in like a freaking balloon, like this big, this big around for 10 bucks. And it's like, you know, I don't even know how big that thing is. Like it's ridiculous how, 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 how cheap 75, 25, or even 80, 20 is compared to 90, 10. Okay. So again, just take the fattier cut of meat and you'll be much better off for the day, okay? So kind of the, the reverse to that is if you eat something that's super, super lean for one meal even, like one, one meal you have, a, um, you have a boneless, skinless chicken breast, it can take you quite literally all day to recover to get enough fat in because you had that. Or let's say that you get a really, really uh, low fat, um, you know, bison burger, for example, right? That can be like 95, you know, a uh, hundred in terms of fat. So there's like no fat, it's all protein. It's gonna take you quite literally all day to recover, okay? <laughs> Douglas says bacon. I, I, I definitely eat bacon, I definitely eat pork, I, I definitely eat sausage, but I try to be careful with it. Um, and I try not to go overboard with, with bacon and pork, to be honest, okay?